positive thing about sports that social aspect and now that's the the one thing we're definitely not allowed to do is come together yeah. so like I feel very lucky that I live in Manchester with the team mm-hmm. that I can train with them so I I lived in I literally just moved out of the house with my team my teammates like a week two weeks ago so and I'm part of like that bubble so I get to train mm-hmm. with them but I couldn't imagine how hard it would be if it was just me training on my own yeah. it's I'm a professional athlete and my motivation wins so <laughs> you know everybody else at club level and everything everything else it's just so hard yeah I suppose 2020 yeah. I'm trying to think back to the beginning of it um because this year has felt like it's maybe five years long so um to be honest like the 2020 season nearly starts for athletics in the cross country of 2019 so we had a really good cross country season um off the back of last summer so I came out of Doha and raced um in the European champs in Lisbon with the the Irish team and we got on the podium the senior women which was absolutely fantastic because cross country is not really my forte um I do it because it keeps me strong over the winter and I thoroughly love having an Irish vest on me so any opportunity to run in an Irish vest I will full-heartedly go into it so um anybody who sees me at cross country knows that like I'll end up <laughs> in an absolute hole at the end of it so coming away with a medal from the Eurocross was fantastic and that kind of snowballed then into the indoor season and I had a really good indoor season if I remember correctly I ran some Irish indoor records mm-hmm. as well um, and I don't know if that was 2019 or 2020 because I'm all confused that was, it was 2020 <laughs> 2020 so to be able to go and run some Irish records I think it was um 1500 meter of the mile or maybe both and that was absolutely fantastic and to be honest that was at the time whenever none of us really foresaw what was coming and so the indoor season went relatively well and then um the indoors were cancelled so we're like okay this is cancelled and COVID-19 occurred and it rolled throughout the whole world and we kind of just um kind of waited on bated breath to see what was going to happen for the rest of the season and as championship after championship started to be cancelled and it was kind of something that I really obviously saw coming I feel like I'm a I'm a pretty realistic person and both me and my my teammates mostly the girls yeah banana we were like yeah realistically the Olympic Games aren't going to go ahead okay we'll prepare prepare ourselves for that Um, I think I took the biggest blow when the European champs were cancelled because I thought there was just a glimmer of hope that we'd be able to race within Europe. Um, So then it felt like kind of such an anticlimax of a year from going um, off a fantastic winter and indoor season, getting ready for an outdoor season and an Olympic Games to have an absolutely nothing. Um, So it was tough. We kind of rallied together as a team and we're stuck in Manchester. I couldn't get home to see my family. I couldn't even see like my little sister. She was in Liverpool um, studying and she's doing nursing. So I couldn't see her. My boyfriend was stuck in Ireland too. I couldn't see him. Um, So that was really tough. But we came together as a team and put our heads down and really worked hard and thought, okay, we'll take this as an opportunity. And I personally saw it as a chance to get better because at Doha, I made the final of the world champs, but I came 10th. And I was absolutely delighted with that. That was my first world final to come tenth in the world. is fantastic. But I wanted to close that gap and I knew it would take time. So this gave me an extra year to get mm-hmm. ready. So put my head down, knuckled down and focused on that. And then the opportunity to race came up and, you know, we kind of jumped at the chance to be able to do any races. So I was really fortunate to have a couple of races lined up because at the highest level of our sport, some of the Diamond Leagues went ahead mm-hmm. and I got into them. Um, so we went to a training camp in Samaritz that was originally on our plans as my pre-Olympic camp. <laughs> so it was a little bit bittersweet going, knowing that that would have been the pre-Olympic camp and knowing that we couldn't have it, but taking the opportunity. And I, I dropped down to race at a lower altitude in Switzerland um, in an 800 first race of the season. Mm-hmm. Thought, just go out and see where you're at. And I ran 159.69 which um, pretty it kind of shocked me, to be honest. I knew that it, it was well within me that I was always capable of running under two minutes for the 800, but this has been the monkey on my back for a long, long time. And um, so to finally do it was just fantastic. And I suppose it was one of those races that if anybody's lucky enough to experience it, whenever everything just comes together and you're just in that zone, as people like to call it, mm. And I felt so good the whole race. And I finished that race being like, well, I can run so much faster than that. Um, and it just takes you to get in that exact place in another race. But um, 
I was over the moon. So being the first Irish running woman to run under two minutes for an 800 was, it was something that I always wanted to do. And I always wondered would I be the first one. So I was delighted to. Um, and then a couple of weeks after that, I went to Monaco, raced the 1000 meters there. And again, came out with a blister in time. And I probably didn't fully appreciate how fast I ran in Monaco until I read a, an article that Cahill Tenney did. Um, where it's he kind of like was like this is possibly Kira McGeehan's best performance of her life and I was like oh I didn't put it down as that <laughs> I'm um, I'm not as much of an athletics buff as some of the guys um, and especially as Cal so and I didn't realize that the time I ran placed me 10th all time in the world over 1000 meters so to get two Irish records over the summer was just absolutely fantastic and you know really the boost that I needed it put me up there on a world level that haven't been at um for really ever with that 1000 meter time so it's a good place to be now getting ready for next year another pre-olympic year take yeah. two and hopefully it'll go much better <laughs> yeah certainly i i suppose i had such a, a high at the beginning of that those few races that i had and then and then like many things in life my last few races didn't go exactly the way i wanted to and and i I kind of I probably hit me quite hard just from coming from the highs of the eight and the one K. I went out and raced some fifteens and ah, oh, they were they were terrible. I reflected, I got back and I chatted to my coach and, and chatted to my sports psych and went to sports doc and was like, okay, let's take this as an opportunity to learn. Um, mm. because I would rather that mistake happen now in 2020 than in 2021 in the Olympic year, the new Olympic year. So I always am I'm a firm believer that every cloud has a silver lining so I was I was just walking on sunshine at the beginning of my few races and then a storm came and mm -hmm. I definitely tried to find that silver lining and learn from it and I feel that I did um, both myself and my coach took a lot away from those negative performances and um, I certainly feel that 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 Irish 1500 meter record is it's in my sights um, it's it's been the monkey on my back too for a while, but it always was just a little bit further out of reach than the 800 standard. Um, so it's it's firmly something that I want to get under my belt. It's something I want before I retire as an athlete. It's been a marker for me for quite some time. So yeah, watch this space. It's certainly something I'm aiming for. And, and it's so nice as well to hear you chatting about like how sport give people a lift during during the down times of lockdown and COVID-19, it was really hard as an athlete because you're weighing up traveling to your race with um, the challenges that COVID-19 presents us all. And, and I know I spoke to Nadia as well, and she asked me about travel and, and what we should do and as athletes, how we should overcome um, that challenge. And as well, it's a challenge for us too, because traveling away from home and coming back was really hard. So we had to make sure we quarantined in our homes when we came back. And we kind of Give those little bit of sacrifices ourselves but it's hard because we want to keep everybody around us safe too and mm. so that was that was a tough challenge but knowing that those little positive performances really helped the the nation and helped other athletes get a little lift during that lockdown I think I I, I never imagined that something I do would make such an impact on other people but I certainly am sure of the impact of sport because even I've seen it I've enjoyed watching the camogie on tv over for the last few weeks I've enjoyed reading about sport and and quite often in in the darkest times it's sport that helps lift people and, and it, as an Irish nation we are so behind our sports people and, and we really look to them for for the good days and they're always the whole the whole island of the Ireland's behind us on the bad days too so it's it's a nice thing about sport that it can lift us all but uh yeah hopefully I'll have a few more occasions going forward that I can help um help the Irish people smile at their sport <laughs> achievements yeah I suppose for me I, I certainly tried to look at it positively it was hard because I kind of go every season and I I thrive off the major champs I'm I'm more an athlete that does I probably oh, I wrote a word it. I know every coach that I've ever had has said I I perform better at, at a championship race than I do at a time trial type race because there's just something in me that wants to do better on those big days. And, and I know that that's how I would prefer to be. I'd prefer to be somebody who comes out and performs well on a big day and at a championship. And I always personally think that it's because I've got my Irish vest on my back that I, I think I've said before, it's like a little superpower. Like it makes me have an extra edge that I want to get out there and run well for my, for my country. And um, 
And I suppose for me, having that challenge over the summer that those goals were taken away from me was quite hard because I always view them as like the, the pinnacle of that season and I'm taking that next step. And as well, the Olympic Games is a four-year cycle that I began thinking about after 2016 mm-hmm. in Rio. And, and I had a lot of plans made for after the Olympics because for many athletes, especially in Olympic sports, we nearly work our whole lives in four year cycles because despite the fact there's other championships, the Olympic, Olympics is the pinnacle of, of most, most sport and people's careers. So I had plans to move house. My boyfriend was going to move to England. I was possibly going to buy a house. I was looking at all these different options. I had said I would do it after the Olympic Games mm-hmm. because it was a perfect time to do it and I don't need to worry about the stress going into um, an Olympic year. So that was, I had these little life goals set out and suddenly I was like, oh, should I rethink them? Should I switch them about? Maybe I shouldn't do them now. Is this going to be a stressor? And little things that m- many people would be like, oh, that's not a big deal. It was for me. Um, but mm-hmm. I think we're all faced with those challenges in life. For many people, the goalposts were moved this year in so many ways, be it work a lot of people became unemployed and lost their jobs and that's an even bigger challenge than than a a championship being moved so a lot of things put my worries and woes into perspective and I have family members that work on the front line my sister's a doctor my little sister's a student nurse of an aunt who's a pharmacist my mommy's a podiatrist and they were all working with patients and I was worried about them and it made me realize like my worries about a race are are not that important and the race is rescheduled and I just need to take that mindset and shift it another year. And so that's what I did. And I just put my head down and focused and got over those little struggles in my own mind. And and definitely I felt that it was a good opportunity for me because it gives me an extra year to close the gap on the girls that were coming first, second and third at the World Champs. And I want to be up there and I want to be battling to be on a podium. And this is my opportunity to have another year to get stronger and better and faster and try to get up there for the Olympic Games. Certainly, yeah. My, I, I suppose the Olympic Games is the big focus and that's the, the kind of pinnacle of 2021 and there'll be other stepping stones on the way. Hopefully, all being well, European indoors goes ahead and we'll have a few more races in the lead up to it. But yeah, like I've, I've always prided myself in trying to improve each year. I feel like my times are improving every year. And yeah, I made my first world final last year, finally. Uh, came 10th and I'm always wanting to improve so yeah I'd like to be back at there at an Olympic final and I'm a firm believer that once you're there it's anybody's game so I'll throw everything in the kitchen sink at it to be up there in that field so yeah watch that spot I know I know what my dreams are Um, like many athletes I dream at the biggest goals and hopefully I can achieve them all being all being well I was really looking forward to that as well because with races cancelled all summer, I thought, okay, maybe there's a hope that we'll be able to get the Eurocross in, in Dublin, like let alone the fact that it's a home Eurocross, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I think it does great things for athletics in Ireland. Um, as well, I was looking forward to having a good old Irish after party with all of my my teammates and my teammates from New, ba- Team New Balance Manchester, who are hopefully racing it. I was like, we're going to have a real night. It's Dublin. Nobody does partying like the Irish. So that's also good. Anybody who's been at a Eurocross knows the after party is probably among the best parts. Um, but yeah, I, I certainly am looking forward to Ireland hosting it in 2021. And we got on the podium, the senior women's team got on the podium in, in Portugal. I think, look, it's, it's not no mean ask to get back there. But I know that the girls will pull everything out of the bag to try to get up there and we'll have a home crowd and yeah it's among the toughest races I ever run it's slightly over distance for me 8k over the cross country and um, it's always tough but I thoroughly enjoy the challenge and I think we have fantastic young athletes coming through as well mm-hmm. we've we've got great girls we've got the two twins coming up over the 10k they did fantastic this summer as well and, you know, there's so many young athletes coming through as well. And we had fantastic medals across the board in Portugal. So I'm looking forward to having a really strong Irish team representing us in, in Dublin. And hopefully we'll have a good, strong Irish crowd behind us. And hopefully we'll have um, a lot of people out cheering on the Irish athletes. So, yeah, it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. And hopefully I'll have a little downtime after the Olympics and then get ready for it. 